guys like fish, this video we're going to look at every breeding group I have ever owned of African cichlids. If you're a fan of fish, give this video a thumbs up. Let's try to get this video over 500 likes, 500. If you can click that subscribe button and notification bell, I would be honored for you to join me. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with one of the groups that I had. This is actually a dual group. This is a Demasoni, which is an Imbuna, and a Yellow Lab, which is also an Imbuna. These are rock-dwelling Malawi fish, and uh, I had these in together as a dual breeding group, and because of them being so different, they didn't cross with each other when I was breeding them. But this is a really good look at these fish. They are gorgeous, they're beautiful. Adding some food in there for you guys to get a great look of what they look like. Uh, if there's no food, they hide. So it's a, a good idea <laughs> to throw some food in there. So this is one of the uh, groups I had, or two of them, Demasoni and Yellow Labs. This is the Red Fin Borlei. This is a Malawi Hap. Uh, I had these guys for a little while, and you can see we got some action of them breeding. Male moving the sand. All right, so the fish we are looking at now is the Sunshine Peacock Cichlid from Lake Malawi. You can see this male is just dancing for that female. I separated them so that there would be no distractions. Um, you can see the female just laid a few eggs and picked them up. Um, yeah, this was one of the cooler breeding groups that I've had uh, just because the male is just something to behold. Now these breeding groups that you're seeing here, um, the first ones that I've showed you so far are all old breeding groups that I used to have. The Demasonite and Yellow Labs, they were sold to somebody else. The Redfin Borlei, I believe I had some issues with them. I had some issues with the Sunshines. Um, this was all back when I was newer and uh, not afraid to admit my mistakes. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to share with everybody these uh, breeding groups that I used to have. Look at the yellow on this fish. It is something to behold. Now this one is a group of dragon blood peacocks. These are a hybrid. A really cool fish that I had for a little while as well and I no longer have. Males huge compared to the females in this video clip but you can see he had beautiful color beautiful beautiful color. Now this tank is a dual group as well this is the Afrikobu and the Elongatus Chiweri. These are two Imbuna groups. You can see that the male in the shot, well not yet because they're flying all over the place, but the male that is coming out right now, he's right on the center rock, that is the Chiweri. And the male that's in the bottom right now, bottom left, that is the Afrikobu. Skittish fish, and I had since moved on from this group as well. This was the Super Red Empress breeding group that I had. I had a 110 that I split and had them in half, so 55 gallons. You can see me pointing to the water. That video was about water movement. These are all old clips of my old breeders. Now this group is a Nimbochromus venustis. This is a predator hap from Lake Malawi. One of the more gorgeous fish because of the different colors. You got the yellow blaze on the head, you got the blue cheeks, the green body, and then you got the white in the fins and the you know dark spots. Very, very cool fish. This aquarium was kept at my office 
and I had issues with these ones. I believe that when the uh, cleaning crew came in to clean the office, I just feel like maybe some airborne chemicals might have ended up in there somehow. Sad. This is a group of Phosphorylchromis rostratus that I had. Didn't really get any luck with these guys. I had one spawn, didn't end up being successful, but uh, gorgeous fish nonetheless. Uh, they call these guys the sand divers because they tend to dive in the sand. But yeah, the Rostratus was a super awesome fish. Now this is the Placidochromis Phenochilus Madoka White Lips. This was my dominant male breeder. Um, definitely sad times. This was my favorite group and best group. You can see that that group produced a lot of fry. There's fry in that breeder box. There is fry in the next breeder box. This is all from these fish. You can see that both of these tumblers have them as well. It was a very productive group, um, ended up having some big time issues. Uh, for those of you who followed me, I had an outbreak that happened in the fish room and most of them died. Uh, sad stuff. Really sad to have seen this group go. Gorgeous fish. I mean, you can see this tank had four males in it at its peak and a bunch of little females and they bred like crazy. Yeah, so here's that group. Uh, love it, miss it. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Okay, now we're taking a look at a group of wild-caught Buchochromis nototania that I had at one point in time. These fish were amazing. They got so nice, as you'll see in a clip here in just a bit. Uh, this was not long after I had them. Uh, so you can see they're looking good, but wait until you see a little bit later. I mean, it's just incredible what these fish look like when they are on fire. Now, these guys, uh, so sadly, they, um, I don't know what happened, but I had, you know, female or two die, I think due, due to aggression. Then one day a female died, the next day another female died, and then the day after that, the male jumped out of the tank. It was weird. It was very, very weird. Talk to some people, you know, possibly uh, maybe an electrical short um, could explain the male jumping out. Um, the females, which is what was weird is they ate and then the day after that, one died and then another. It, it just was the weirdest thing. So, I mean, that's the thing with fish. We all know, you know, sometimes they do absolutely amazing and then other times there's issues. Um, you know, we just try our best to keep everything going smoothly. But, yep, this is wild caught group of Buchochromis nototania that I had. Here is one of those female nototania. Um, I pulled her one day and stripped all the eggs out so I could put them in the tumbler. Now, this is a separate female. Now, look at this. I caught footage of her spitting out her fry. You'll see it right now. There, look at that. And she's gonna swim again a little bit and go some more. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, again, this was the Nototania and I seen this with my own eyes. It was something to behold. And I'm really glad that I was able to catch it on, um, you know, on video. Now, what's really cool is if you look at the fry, look at how they just follow the mother around. I mean, that is so cool. Now we got footage of her pulling in the fry. So now she is getting the fry to come back into her mouth for protection. Um, this is what they do in the lake. It is something yeah there's a reason why breeding african cichlids get so addicting because you see things that just are unexplainable i 
I believe this was the first female that I let spit on her own because I knew how far along she was and she hadn't spit so I wanted to give it a shot. I usually pull them and strip them so that you know I can have successful batches. This here is a batch of Madoka White Lip Fry that I had. You know, as you can see, things were going really well. Now we're back to the Nototania. Look at the male here who is trying to get the female to breed. Absolutely <laughs> unreal. The color is just fantastic. You can see there was another male in there that was really colored up as well. You know, kind of joshing for position, I guess you could say. You'll see right here, they kind of go at it. You see, you could tell right now, this is kind of what they'll do. They kind of follow each other and do their thing. In person, it's spectacular. Now, this is my Buchochromis lepturus green. For those of you who know, I had a, a successful batch, but look at this male. Oh my. Something to behold. Wow. Some footage I caught a little while back of them breeding. I was super excited during this time. Uh, for those of you who've seen the video when I posted it, um, you guys know exactly how excited I was for sure. So again, if you like fish, if you like seeing fish breed and the colors and just all the awesome things about fish, give this video a like. Let's get it to 500. Here's just some breeding behavior. You can see the females going down to, you know, the area where they want to breed and the males just doing what he can to keep her there. Now, these are the Aristochromus Christii, these fish I currently have, as well as those Lepturus green. Uh, the greens and the hawks are two groups that I currently have. And uh, they look really great. The tank, I changed it up a bit. The sand I pulled out and put some more rocks. Um, but I might actually go back to sand. We'll see what happens. Just kind of, you know, messing around. These these fish uh, definitely poop a lot. And cleaning up the sand all the time, you know, gets a little old, gets a little tough. Um, especially when you're feeding them heavy because you want them to breed. Um, it's just much, much easier to clean the tank when it is a bare bottom. So that's what I currently have, but these clips were from when the tank had sand in them. Definitely caught some action of these guys breeding, the Aristochromus Christii. You can see just how beautiful the male is. He's all on fire and loving it. Here we go, some up close to these guys. There, she just picked an egg up that she laid. It's interesting how these fish breed there because because they're mouth brooders, um, it's different from a lot of other fish. Like I know Central and South American cichlids, they lay their eggs on objects. I know fish like salmon when they come back into the rivers um, the Pacific salmon when they come back into the rivers after being out in the ocean for a couple of years when they lay their eggs they just lay it right on the gravel beds of the rivers and the eggs just make it um, very different from how the African cichlids breed of being mouth brooders it's definitely unique and something you don't really see in other animals Thanks again for 
watching the video, everybody. Again, if you like fish, give this video a thumbs up. I'd love to see if we could get this to 500 likes. If you could comment down below, what do you think of the breeding groups? Have you ever bred fish? Just kind of load up those comments. If you guys can share, that'd be great. And if you could click that subscribe button and notification bell, I would be honored for you to subscribe and join me on my fish keeping adventures. Very cool. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thanks again for watching and stay tanked.